love, relationship, marriage, sex, intimate talk with Tolu, shoulder to lean on. Low self-esteem could be one of the reasons why you're single against your wish and it's also common to the men. Especially a lot, I mean, I need to touch this because I get a lot of messages from men I say that's, I mean, young men who feel like, ah, eh, Dr. Tulu, I want to get married now, but my penis is too small. I don't know if my wife now, if he sees it, I'm there because of that. You don't want to go ahead and take the next step to get married. You don't want to get married because you are feeling like, I, I mean, how do I make love to my wife? They will look down on me. I mean, come on, come on, come on. I said that on several occasions. It is not about size, it's about skills. So stop worrying your head about, ah, I'm so short, I'm so this, I don't have money. Come on. In fact, you see, eh, the guys that don't have money, I want you to notice, are the ones that ladies are always running after. I want you to talk about that. These guys, you know, you call them players, but they understand, the, they understand what women want. So stop looking down on yourself. It could be the reason why you are just folding your arms and all the good girls around you, people are picking them. And then you will fold, you fold your arm, you keep shirts. You like a lady, you don't know how to toast her. You don't know how to tell her, you know, I just like you, you don't know how to say it. And then your friend, you just come and pick her and then you start getting angry and keeping my list with your friend. Did you tell her you want to marry her? You did not. So low self-esteem is actually one of the reasons why some people are single against their wish. And then my number eight point is what I call wrong belief about the population, <laughs> about man-woman population. Men, this is common to the men and also to the women. You know, let me start with the women. The ladies were like, there are so many ladies and that's why I cannot get married. So they just use that to console themselves and conclude, because there are so many ladies, I am not alone, so there is no husband, no men to marry. And then this thing is not making the men to also feel cool, you know, Say, actually, you know, there are so many ladies when I want to marry, I'll pick anyone that I like. Wrong belief about the population of man to woman. Now, the point is, you go to Google and Google the current population of men to women in Nigeria, in Africa, in the world. You will know that there are more men of marriageable age than women. So let nobody come and tell you that, ah, there are so many women, no, no man to marry them. Who says? You know, I said I'm going to talk about this point. Now, the point here is this. Now, because um, men, now let me let me use Nigeria as an example. The, the reason why you think there are more women than men is because, for example, ladies want to get married between, let's say, 24, let's just say, let's say 22 to 28, for example. You want to get married ordinarily, normally 22 to 28. And the guys maybe want to get married 28 to 35. 28 to 35. <laughs> the guy is still struggling to even find his feet. No money to feed. No, he doesn't even know where his future is heading to after graduating. And he's talk, you are talking about marriage to that kind of a man. Marriage is not the best thing. So he's thinking about how do I make ends meet? How do I better my life? So by the time he, you know, as a matchmaker, I see this analysis on a daily basis. And you know, by the time he thinks he's ready, he's already probably 37, 38, that, that is the common trend now. 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42 is very common. Now, a guy who, who was supposed to be married between 28 and 35 for example supposed to be married to somebody who was between 22 to 28 decided to marry at 38 and at that 38 is going to look for somebody who is now 22 to 28 so what happened to the ladies who were 22 to 28 when he was supposedly to be married to them. Do you get the analysis now? So the problem we are having is not that there are more men than women. It is economy-induced scarcity of marriageable men. So that is the problem. So stop thinking, I don't want to hear that belief. Go and Google it. Google. Go to your Google. It's there. There are more men of marriageable
marriageable age and women. So let nobody deceive you. So because that is there, some men actually feel that so many women are not ready to marry. That could delay you unnecessarily. And it could also make the women to believe wrongly and, and be comfortable waiting unnecessarily. Then my number nine is very close to number eight. It's what I call wrong interpretation of the Bible. Isaiah 4 verse 1. Very common. Seven women who hold one man. <laughs> People always say that. I mean, I get that a lot of time. People are quick to quote that uh, this thing. But why not read what God says in chapter 3? You will actually read. So stop quoting Isaiah 4 1. Go to chapter 3, verse 25. Read what happened. Then go to 3, verse 1 to 3. So you don't start saying that for several women, it's those things. You are just quoting one piece. It is not true. So it's something that could make people to be single against their women because they believe, ah, I'm a man, ah, I'm the almighty. Several women will start begging me. Wait there. Intimate talk with Tolu. Shoulder to lean on. We are still talking 15 reasons why you might probably be single against your wish and I'm going straight to my number 10 point that I call family sacrifice. Family sacrifice. I know when I say family sacrifice, the next thing that comes to your head is spiritual, this thing and all that. So. Now, this is Africa. I remember a man of God that says uh, Africa is African are wicked. You can't underestimate the power of spirituality in this part of the world. In fact, I studied uh, counseling in Scotland. And in one of our courses, you know, we were talking about spirituality, you know, as a clinical counselor, and you, you, we were told that you, you, you blank your mind about spirituality when you tackle every situation with your clients. Unless you are a pastoral counselor, but as a clinical counselor, you want your mind about attaching spirituality because they feel spiritual attaching spirituality is like a shortcut, not to find out what is you know it's like a shortcut for you to come out of taking your time you know to psychoanalyze your clients and find out what is actually happening to the person. As soon as you just conclude the spiritual, you'll not be able to do any other thing. Now the point is this. I, I was able to raise a point then, and I told them that in the part of the world, if I'm not in the in the part of the world where I come from, you, don't, you can't underestimate uh, NRC. <laughs> you know, you can't underestimate people, which is, I mean, these are not uh, wishes that eat pizza or uh, burger. <laughs> these are wishes that suck. <laughs> that sucks human blood. Now, the point is, Spirituality is a big deal in this part of the world, so I don't make light of it. But the point is, it could be spiritual. But this particular point that I call family sacrifice, I'm actually not talking about spirituality. I'm talking about one notice, firstborn. It's a trend. I could actually come out and talk about all this thing because I see it a lot of time. It's a trend, a lot of first daughters, first daughters, first son are always, you know, finding it difficult to get married because there's a particular lady, you know, she, before out now she's still single, she came to me for matchmaking and we talked. She, she actually, she, she came for counseling, okay, I remember. She came for counseling and I told her she needs to come back and register for matchmaking. She's, um, she didn't even realize what the problem was. It was after the counseling session that she was able to say, Yes, Dr. Tolu, you just mentioned where the problem is coming from. You see, most of the time when people come into my office, if you are single and uh, you are single against your wish and you are willing, you are trying to wrap your head around what is going on, you can actually, you know, we need to start cultivating those habits in this part of the world. You can actually schedule an appointment. Let's talk about it. You know, let's analyze what is going on around you. It is not going to be difficult to find out the reason why you are single. And as soon as you find out the reason it's going to be easy to work on it so this particular so I, I, i'm just trying to i'm encouraging you if you are single and you are watching or you are seeing me out there come on schedule an appointment with me let's analyze what is happening around you maybe this it is not so difficult by the time we talk to find out actually why you are single love relationships marriage sex Intimate talk with Tolu. 
shoulder to lean on.